Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello, happy Wednesday. It's not Wednesday, it's Thursday. Ooh, this is gonna throw me off all week that I didn't stream yesterday. <laughs> happy Thursday um, from California. Beautiful day, it was 95 degrees Fahrenheit yesterday, which is like 38 degrees Celsius, no joke. Well, it was, it was a little less than 38. That's about 100 degrees. It was supposed to be 100, and it could have been, I don't know, I didn't, leave my house because I was feeling pretty poorly yesterday, but I feel totally great today. So, hey Serena, how's it going? And um, I don't know if you saw my post on Instagram, but they are felling the trees that are right next to my office. They did a few real, the closest to my office. There's a few more and I'm not sure, they look like they're marked for removal, but they're not focusing on those. So maybe they're not marked for removal. It's hard for me to tell. Usually the blue dot means it and I can't see the blue dot. And um, they're on the other side, but I think it's their lunchtime. So we're just gonna try and do our stream because I don't think it'll be that long. And we'll see if it bugs us. I'll just, we'll just continue another time, but um, hopefully we can get it in today. So, hey Martina, how's it going? You ready? Nice. Okay, so let's get into it. I have a few announcements, just a couple of things. Um, I will be gone next week, so there's no live streams, but I'm trying my best to get some videos together. I had a very ambitious plan. I had my second vaccination shot on Tuesday afternoon. Thankfully, I didn't mark myself down for streams on yesterday because I was just achy all day and I felt kind of blah, you know? <laughs> and so I sat around all day doing nothing and feeling kind of just ugh and starving. <laughs> and so... um which meant that I couldn't record some of the videos I planned on doing yesterday. Hello, Hannah, how's it going? And I already have two that are recorded, one edited, one recorded, and another one almost done. So I think that I'll be able to post some videos next week while I'm away, I'm hoping. So it's better for my YouTube algorithm. So I don't get much, so I'm trying to always keep up my, at least keep my YouTube algorithm going. So we'll, we'll see. I don't know, really know how it works. So um, so that's my first announcement. I won't be live next week, but I'll be back the following week on that Wednesday, which is the day after my birthday. So we'll have like a kind of minor birthday stream. I'm not, I kind of know what I'm going to do. I kind of have a surprise, a funny thing for you guys to watch. So um, I think it'll be fun. It'll be casual. And let's see, what else? Okay, I got my new wireless mic. Um, so this plugs into my computer, this goes on me. But it's not co connecting with my computer. I, th I specifically picked one that would work for a desktop, not a device. It will work with a device, but I'm not doing that, like a lot of people are now. And for some reason it's still not connecting to my computer and I don't have it hooked up yet. So I'm working on that. This was a little um, little investment I made. These are made in Australia, which is pretty cool. 
I know there's a lot of Australians that come to the live streams and watch them uploaded since I'm not streaming at a good time for you all. So um, hopefully I'll get this set up and this will kind of speed things up a little bit. I won't be moving my microphone. Hopefully the sound quality is good. If it's not, I'm just going to return them because um, I want the sound to be better, not worse than what I have. I'm, I'm trying to go for much better sound quality and it's really hard because it has to kind of be away from me with the machines and stuff. So I'm working on that and this is the little cord. It hooks to my computer so this is like a wireless receiver and then this has a little like clip so you're going to see this little box on me now and then we'll probably have to have a command in chat. What's that white thing on you? <laughs> I, I, could, I guess I should have gotten one that looks like a little microphone. I thought this thing was like this big though, you know? You can't ever tell, it's not in someone's hand. Right, Serena? Of course, it wouldn't be smooth sailing. I was like, ooh, I hooked it up and I was like, oh my gosh, there it is. It was picking up the default microphone on my computer and I'm like, wow, that is one terrible microphone quality. <laughs> but it wasn't, it was picking up the hum of the computer because it was the computer. So, So we'll work on that. Um, I got a, now I have a mailing address. I'm very pleased and it's a PO box. If you want to send me a postcard, I would love it. Um, it should be now in my description, but I'll tell you it anyway. It's a PO box 253 and that's in Paradise, California, 95967. So that's pretty exciting. I didn't have any way to receive anything here, like even I wasn't sure. I can. I think I can get packages if it's not U.S. mail. Uh, it's a little tricky. I didn't realize my address is not a real address till after I moved in. And even my insurance people called me two days ago and they're like, uh, we just sent your policy to you and it got returned. But we sent it to the address we're insuring. So we're just wondering what's going on. I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, yeah, I didn't know that wasn't an address. So, um, <sighs> yeah, I'm really here, but... Anyway, I don't want to give out my home address, you know? So it's been kind of weird the last couple of months. All right, uh, last thing I'm going to do, I am decided, this is just like my phone, fun little side project. I'm doing my best to get a project ready for my trip that I can work on with hand stitching. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> and I'm going to do the March dress by Helen's Closet. I'm the, the top, actually. I'm going to do a top version. And I have this kind of interesting like linen it's pretty lightweight i think it would be great for kind of embellishing the yoke of the top and i got some green thread i went to my old yarn store in chico heartstrings a really awesome yarn store and uh, i really love the owner there she's just really super smart and um got a good head on her shoulders and she stocks the biggest variety uh, of stuff I've seen and so I kind of knew without checking that she'd have some supplies so I went there and I got some um, some em like kind of embroidery floss but I got crochet cotton. Hi Libby nice to see you. <laughs> so um, yeah so I'm gonna do and I got like a Kelly green so I'm gonna do some I think I might do this version here. Let me see if I can show you some oh, oh my printer you know what oh is this the only understand what is going on with my printer. I told it to put it on two sides and it didn't. Look what it did. It put every other page upside down. Hi Ursula. So these are the views. I was looking at the sizing and I was thinking um, and I rarely ever look at the finished measurements unless I'm like hmm how loose or tight is this and this is one it looks really loose on people kind of thinking about going a size down because the ease is still there for my measurements if I don't want a really big floofy top. I love the look of this line drawing here, but I don't think it, I don't think proportionally it'll look like that on me. And I always shy away from peplums because I have a belly, but I'm going to go for something kind of like that. I, I may, maybe I would even raise this up. So what I'm kind of going for is I have this really cool top I, or it was a dress that I got in Mexico. And if you know, you know what this looks like because it's like a muslin fabric and it's been hand embroidered all over the, the bodice and kind of down into the torso a little bit. But 
I was never going to wear this big dress everywhere. Uh, you know, it just wasn't going to happen. So I lopped it off and I wear it as a top all the time. I really love that thing. And I, I love that it was hand embroidered and everything. And so I kind of wanted to do my version of that. And maybe even pick some like Scandinavian motifs or something. So we'll see. <laughs> We'll see. I'm going to make sure I have enough fabric today. I may be like not even be able to do it. I have two yards of this, but it's pretty wide. And yeah, we'll see. But this, look at the back view of this. This is really cute. And it has these like seams going down. So I'm not sure. Hi, Mrs. Necro. It's gone. So we'll see. I printed out the pattern and I printed out two sizes only. So I don't have a whole lot of jumble of lines on here. And my, I asked my printer to print this on front and back. No, it printed it every other page upside down instead. I hate my printer. I never say things like that about some of my equipment, but I hate my printer. It just, you know, it's never gotten along with me. Hi, Michelle. How's it going? All right. So what are you here for today? Let's see what we got. Let me move all this stuff out of my way, though. I'll put it, I'm kind of running out of space. Those two extra machines have really made my, I need to fig configure that still, and it may be a bit before I get to it, but I have an idea. I have an idea, and I think it's gonna make the visibility of the machines really good too. I just may be sacrificing part of my ironing station, so we'll see. Um, all right, so what am I doing today? I think I've mentioned wanting to do this for months to you guys. So I have this, in my opinion, kind of ugly pajama top it's okay, It's it looks actually a little better on camera, which is not the case usually. You know when it looks better on camera that it doesn't look that great in person. <laughs> so it's kind of a swing tank top. It's in a very stretch, stretchy, boingy fabric. You, you all know this fabric, you know. I love it in the summertime and I always want it. It's just the lightest and coolest. Um, it's very hot where I live. And um, I even, it's so hot where I live that I have a um, air cooling mattress topper on my bed that costs kind of a pretty penny and it blows cool air. It doesn't, it's not cooled air as an air conditioning. It's just blowing air and any air is cool air. <laughs> oh, okay, Mrs. Necro, no worries. Oh, good luck on his interview then. So, um... But I only have one of these and I probably got this at like Target a really long time ago when I moved here and I was desperate for something cool to wear at night. But this is my plan. I already had copied this. I was just going to do this on my own. And now I'm just like, you know what? I've got a new serger and a new cover stitch and this is going to be really fun. I'm going to do this with you guys. So um, I'm just going to hem these. They, they are bound. I don't really need to do that. It does offer some stability, but I, I'm not planning on binding it. I'll think about it. Um, so I'm going to copy this with my tracing wheel. Got it out here. And this is the needlepoint style. There is a link in my description to this. Um, it's an affiliate link, so I get a few pennies for that for, if you buy it from me, but not from me, but through my link. But I, uh, the only reason I tell you about that it's in a link in my description is because... Um, you need to make sure if you get one of these that it actually has these needle points. They're very sharp too. This isn't something you give to your kid. Like I was always like, here kid, have my scissors. I don't really care, but this I wouldn't give her. So um, if you are wanting to trace off a garment, you have that favorite garment in your closet. It's starting to show wear and you're like, oh, I really need to copy this before it falls apart. This is the thing you need if you don't want to tear apart your garment. Um, the most accurate way to do it is to tear apart the garment, remove all the thread, keep all the seam allowances intact, iron it out, and then you can't you have your pattern pieces with a little bit of finessing on them, right? So um, this is um, the best way to do it because what you do is you know you put it through on your garment and it transfers holes on the paper that you can see and then you just draw on the lines and so you need to be careful you don't do it all through all your layers of paper because the holes will go all the way down it's that sharp the reason i'm telling you this is because there are things called tracing wheels that don't do this 
the um, tines are more, they're like um, more blunt and short, very short and blunt. And those are not the same thing. So even if you don't buy the one in my affiliate link, just go to it so you can see what it looks like. Because I actually tried to link one to Waywack because I would much rather support a family business. But theirs is incorrectly named Needlepoint Tracing Wheel and it's not in the picture. So, and I keep meaning to contact them and just say, hey, you might want to change this because they probably know exactly what this is and it's just one of those weird things that when you're trying to upload a lot of product, things like that happen. So, those other ones, I've never used one before. For a long time, the trend in, in like home sewing and pattern drafting and stuff like that was using this tracing paper and that would be a good thing for the tracing paper because it wouldn't damage the paper and it was a pressure sensitive tracing paper that would make copies. You could copy your pattern so then you don't tr you don't cut your pattern out. And that was a, f and I don't know, maybe people still do that, but I don't ever hear people talking about that anymore. But that was for a really long time. A lot of people didn't want to cut their patterns so they would trace them out and they would use this duplicate paper and this tracing wheel. Yeah, for carbon paper, exactly. And so I've never done that before, but that's what that one would be for. So if you're interested in that, then that might be a way to go for you. So anyway, I'm just being really clear about this. I've had this since uh, I went to college. I graduated in 1991. <laughs> so it's lasted a long time. Definitely, you know, got my money's worth. Um, it's a wooden handle, which is pretty cool. Very light. So anyway. So I'm going to be tracing my little jammy top here, but I also have a scoop neck t-shirt pattern that I made a while ago. If you've been in the stream for a while, you remember when I did this. Um, I tried to kind of, I think it was uh, Mrs. Necro who had shared the um, YouTuber who said, hey, if you want like a quick and dirty way to make your block, here is, um, and her name is Closet Historian, that YouTuber. Um, if you want a, a quick and dirty way to make a block, Here's a really great list of patterns to try. Well, I kind of did this a few years ago to make my t-shirt. I used the Colette Moneta dress. At the time, I feel like that was a good time, like tail end of when you were just seeing Monetas all the time and they would have this like annual Moneta madness thing. And so many people, women, um, it is a women's pattern, would make Moneta dresses. It was like this ubiquitous knit, perfect knit scoop neck t you know scoop neck dress and so what i did was i used that since so many people would have that pattern to make my scoop neck t-shirt pattern and because i figure oh people have this as a starting point and uh colette historically came in a lot of sizes more sizes than any of the indie patterns that were around at the time so i knew it was a good choice for that so i based the one i made from the moneta block Moneta dress and I made my own little scoop neck tee block and I also have a couple of other versions of this where I made a v-neck version I made a version with a neck band and then um, I have this little cap sleeve and I made a couple of sleeve variations So I'm going to copy this and I'm also going to make a version that incorporates this with my little cap sleeve So I have a sleeved version too. So that's my plan today. I also have my you can't see it under my camera there under my face, but I have some underwear. I might have some fabric enough to make some matching underwear, which would be kind of funny. So I might do that too. And then Saturday, I'm gonna be sewing them up. So this will be fun. And it's starting to get hot and I'm starting to pull this out. So it's the perfect time. All right, so let's get all my paper out of the way so I don't accidentally perforate all the layers. So when you're copying a pattern like this, you only need to, like this is a symmetrical garment, you really only need to do half. I really like to do it from the inside, it's because I can get it the flattest. And so uh, it's very logical. I'm going to stack all my seams like this and just pin it together so that I have half a garment and it's perfectly symmetrical. And it won't be perfectly symmetrical. I'm just gonna tell you right now that uh, 
Sometimes this is the, the funniest exercise because you can really see how inaccurate they are in a factory. So I'm just laying the seam right on top of that, trying to keep it just on the edge there. And you'll see like, oh, like either this fabric did something funny or they trimmed a little more or um, it's never as symmetrical as you think it's gonna be. It's oddly comforting. <laughs> hello, Rebecca, hello. Rebecca, draw it, make it, hi, Sarami. <laughs> hi, Ray, how's it going? Yeah, it gets that hot up here, Libby. Doesn't it get that hot where you live? Yeah, it gets hot. All right, I'm gonna do my shoulders and then I'm gonna do my center front and center back seam. Now this is a knit, so I'm not as, uh, you know, I don't really feel like I have to get it perfect. I'm gonna try, but I'm not gonna fuss with it and make it so perfect at the expense of driving myself crazy. This is the other thing you'll see is that things aren't ever on the grain. See that? Can you see my torque lines? Hey, Melinda. Wow, Melinda and Rebecca are here. Three, I know two people in real life. <laughs> All right, so I, when I have things like this on the fold, it seems a little bit like, um, so look at this. He, these are lined up, but look at how far off these are. It's an inch off. Feeling better now? Um, I do the fold because it just stabilizes it and makes it a little bit easier. Oh, it does not cool off here at night. At my new house, it does because we have a breeze that comes down the valley. So it's kind of one of those, um, the breeze is really great, but at the same time, it's also the part of the problems for fires in our area. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. Well, it's not a double-edged sword. Oh, right, Rebecca. It's so funny because it looks like you're saying that because it says colon. <laughs> All right, and so look at, I don't know, can you see, look at this big wrinkle right here. The problem when you're copying a garment like this and it's not as accurate to get it on the fold is that you might compromise some of the fit. Look at how bad that is. Look at how bad that is. Can you guys see that? Ugh. See how good you guys are? Your guys are better than any factory, right? Pros. I can't even get, this is as good as it gets. <laughs> hey, I didn't blame anybody. Rebecca started that. <laughs> okay. Um, do we want to do the armhole? We could do the armhole a little bit. We'll just put one on each side and then we're ready. But boy, those torque lines on the back are something else, aren't they? All right. So you can tell this is a pretty swingy top. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was that this neckline, it wasn't a V, it was a scoop. And all they did was put a little stitch in the binding at the center to make it a V. I'm just saying that so that, because there's a lot of folks that will try and make certain necks a V-neck by using certain sewing techniques that are so fussy and really just something no one would really use, like, like binding a V-neck. You really can't bind a V-neck uh, without doing some tricksy stuff because your binding can't turn a corner like that. You're gonna have this little like, little blip. <laughs> and so, um, and they would just never do that in a factory, not this cheap of a garment, you know? 
All right. So now you want it to lay as flat as possible, right? And it does get tricky when you have these like whole like curves and stuff like that. This is probably the easiest kind of garment to do because there's no sleeves, there's no collars, uh, there's really nothing obstructing it. It's a really great garment to start with if you're kind of new to doing something like this. Just getting the hang of it. The fabric itself is really the challenge because it's so like unstable and boingy, you know? I need more weights. So let's relax this over here. Kind of get this as relaxed as possible. Just like this. Like that there. I have one weight over here, I'll steal it, but it's holding down all my underwear patterns. All right, so now I'm gonna just use my tracing wheel to trace it. And I think, um, yeah, exactly, Michelle, they do, exactly. Hi, Barbara. Twisty, yeah, exactly. Hello. Um, I thought you said hello earlier. You said Nello. <laughs> Pulling out the Nancy hello. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, all right, so when I'm doing stuff like this, I think um, you, whatever your, your kind of instinct is to starting this, are you going to be the person that traces it on the the edge of the seam allowance, like here, you know, on this side seam, you can see the seam allowance, right? Are you going to be the one that traces it on the seam or the seam allowance? And I think that I would go with whatever your first instinct is, because when you remove this garment and you're going to trace it, you're going to have to be like, oh, was that the seam line or the seam allowance? Or you could just do both. Hi, Terry. How's it going? So that is one thing that um, it's kind of like anything you do. It's like it doesn't matter how you do it, which way you do it. You just need to be consistent and remember what you did or write it down or something. And you get kind of eager. You're so excited to use the little tool, you know. So I kind of just know naturally what I would trace, trace and I'll remember it just because I've done this a bunch. I always do it on the seam line on the inside here. Because then I can add whatever seam allowance I want. So I personally like tracing the garment as if it's finished. So I don't include the seam allowances or the hems. I do the finished garment. We're just make sure it's always relaxed. You're just going to do your best. It's funky. Especially this one, obviously, because they it's so torqued. I've been collecting fabrics for this project for a bit. I picked three fabrics that are a little out of my comfort zone, so I thought that'd be perfect for, for pajamas. All right, so let's make sure we got everything here. This <clears throat> looks a little bit, I don't know, it's, it is exactly what it is, but it doesn't, like the shoulder seam looks a little not at a right angle to the, the sides there. All right. All right, now we can remove this. And we'll write down front. If you were doing a scoop neck, it might be really easy to confuse your front and your back. And then we're gonna do our back. I had all my paper waiting today. So you don't have to hear me cutting the paper and stuff. Ooh, well, why are you planning on making them out of a non-stretch? I guess that would be my first question. Um, because you might want to pick a different pair of shorts if you're kind of, you really love those. God, this is so bad. Look at that big old. <laughs> Even the shirt's like, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. It hurts. Please don't make me lay flat. So what I'm going to go with here is, thankfully I have this nice smooth area right here. So that'll go on this edge here. 
and I have a smooth edge, a smooth area over here, and we're just gonna fill it in right here because we have some pre. You can't see under here, but there's a pretty significant wrinkle right here. We're just doing our best. Now the other thing you could do is use your front to trace it off. When you're getting more confident with your pattern draft, you can use the front to make the back. You don't have, oh, so you don't want to, um, because you ha don't have a stretch denim on hand. Um, well, that's not really a question about how you would copy them, uh, because you would still copy them the same way. It's more like how are you gonna modify your pattern to be for non-stretch and what I would do is I would add a little to the circumference of your pattern, not the length, but the circumference, since that's really what's going to be the deciding factor and maybe just in a little bit to the length. Yeah, exactly, Michelle. It has, or it just wasn't cut on grain. Very possible in a big factory, they would have totally just made it fit on budget and you don't want to know what they do people like complain about the fit of certain things in in uh, these certain price categories but they're getting it for five dollars so i don't really know why they're complaining it's five dollars it could have been an excellent fitting pattern before it went to the factory trust me as a pattern drafter I saw that I would be called out you know like I would be like hey how did this get through quality control how did you guys you know pass this this doesn't even adhere to our our size guidelines or our QA our quality assurance and we'd say yeah here are our quality assurance garments and that doesn't match the factory why don't you talk to your factory you know it was like always the who did where did it fall apart at but I never worked in a very, um, let's see, what did I work in? I didn't work in low budget, but that's the job you want. Like if you can make garments that sell in a low budget, that's where the money's at. People think it's in couture, but it's not. <laughs> it's working for like big places like Target and stuff. So you could size one up, but you don't want to, you don't want to change the length that much. You don't want to go up a whole size in your length. Oh, nice, Terry. Yeah, you could do that, Mrs. Necro. I would figure out maybe the percentage of stretch of your shorts and see about um, how much of that percentage you can maybe add back to the garment. You could do also the other kind of tactic is uh, go buy a pair of non-stretch shorts that fit you and copy them and then return them. I know it's pretty bad, huh? But that's what people do. I'm not really advocating that, but it happens. It's so, it's so common. All right, I'm just gonna <laughs> ignore this right here. Maybe this is why this fits me really good because I always need a little bit scooped out here, but it's there, it's just in a weird spot. All right, so now let's put our patterns together. Don't take all your pins out of this yet. I know you're like, ah, oh, I wanna put this back in my closet. Just leave them there. You might have to check something, trust me. <laughs> Right, Ray? I know. I think everyone is kind of has similar problems. Doesn't matter what size you are, we all have fitting problems. So now I'm just drawing on the perforated dots. You can kind of see, can you see that perforation? I do do my patterns uh, on the full pattern. You don't have to do that. You could save paper and just do it on a half. I find it more accurate to be able to cut it out when I, especially knits, when I can open it up. All right, so let's trace our front as well. That shoulder is a little disturbing, what it looks like. 
See, I can see this went to the um, cutting, the factory, and they were cutting it out. And they were like, oi, we need to get X number of these out of the fabric they sent us. And they say that we can do it because they've made a marker. And they um, they provided us a marker, but that's not really working. So um, we're going to... We make our own markers here at our factory. So we're just gonna tilt this one a half inch. No big deal, no one will ever know. And then we can get all of them in and um, save this fabric, you know. Now, this one isn't for carbon paper. Hi, Malin. Hi, Elizabeth. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Yeah, you've got some shorts you love. Yeah, I mean, if you have the fabric, you can try it. I think it's to totally doable. I would try it myself. <laughs> I don't blame you at all. <laughs> yeah, right, Libby? Yeah, I think, like, anytime we've had that pair of leggings where the seam is on the, on the leg isn't where it should be. <laughs> So, yeah, so Sydney, the one that doesn't have the needle points is for carbon paper. I just don't want people to accidentally buy a, a tracing wheel and they get that one, the one for carbon paper, but they want to do this. This that, that one will not work on a garment. It will not go through the garment and leave holes. I promise. <laughs> I promise. Okay, look at my shoulders. <laughs> they're not parallel at all. I used to know a pattern drafter that did this um, intentionally and it annoyed the heck out of me. It was the weirdest thing. He had this whole crazy uh, complicated uh, formula for it and I was like, dude, making them parallel and this one, the back a little taller, the, the fit benefit you get from doing what you're doing is so it's it's like it could be lost in cutting and sewing so easily that it's just not there it wasn't worth the trouble so all right so let's um let's add our seam allowance here to we'll we'll do the um front since it's a simple garment, I'm going to trust that what I've traced is good. I'm going to add about a, who, what do I want for a hem? Like on this one, it's pretty much a narrow hem. It's a budget garment. That's partly why, you know, this one's, it's like a little under a half inch. We'll stick with that. It would be really nice to get a pair of underwear that match. So make sure that when you're doing this, this is your opportunity to put your right angles at your center front. You still need that. It doesn't matter what your garment's telling you. You still need that. You also need it here at your um, intersections here at your um, armhole. Uh, I'm just going to hem my armholes. I don't really want to spend all my time doing binding on them and we're going to probably we're going to fix this this uh, shoulder too so the original one is one and three quarters wide so i'm going to put a right angle at this honestly i just don't really like it so i'm going to cut out a lot of this and then i'm going to start using it to true up the back and get my shoulder between the two. Let's just cut off all this extra paper. So it's a little easier to deal with. Let's true up our back. Actually, I'm gonna cut my front on the three sides. On the um, side seam. and the hem. And I just kind of go back and forth between my front and my back, splitting, splitting the difference here and there where things are a little bit like, oh, this one's here and this one's there, you know. 
like I said, this is a perfect garment to try this kind of thing because of the um, the fact that it's stretchy and sleeveless. I may be taping back a little paper at the shoulder here, but we'll stop there. And now let's add a faint 3 8 seam allowance to this side and a half here. And we're going to line up our front on top here. Let's do the 3 8 up here too. There's no reason why these side seams can't be the same. The back is a little straighter. So instead of a dart, you know, because it's a knit, they're doing that. You should double check that they fit, still fit. Yeah, that's a good idea. Also make some gloves. Ray, I thought you liked me. I don't think I'll do the lettuce edge. I would like more stability. I don't want really the armholes to stretch out. Maybe on the hems of my sleeves, though, I could do the lettuce edge. It's a good idea. That's very jammy like so if i wanted to intersect can you see these lines okay you can see them pretty good right would you like me to zoom in at all what has making gloves got to do with my new serger and my new cover stitch <laughs> so this little juncture here with the finished um intersection here of the underarm let's see if we just line it up on the back what happens if we line it up down here as well it's pretty close Honestly, this edge is probably a little longer because this one's straighter. This one has a little bit of a curve. I think I'm going to keep that curve on the back because I can always use a little less fabric at the small of my back. So we will trace this. And um, I'm going to use this, a different color now. Or just maybe the Sharpie. So I make sure I do the right line. And then we'll add our hem to the back. Remember, you need your right angle at center back. You don't want any points. You need a smooth line when you're hemming anyway. Yeah, exactly, Sydney. Learn to knit, Ray. You know how to knit, I thought. Make your gloves. <laughs> All right, and then let's add it to... We had a 3 8 inch hem here. Yeah, so... Blend it in here. I could technically make this also to wear, you know, around. Like, it doesn't have to just be a jammy top, but it's kind of a big armhole. You know, it's meant for jam pajamas. All right, so now let's start looking at our shoulder here. I kind of want to just make this a little bit more like this, like this, which would be more parallel to the back. The problem is that makes the neckline longer and the armhole a little shorter. So I gotta be really careful with that. We could inadvertently increase something or decrease something, but it already fits pretty good, you know? like. This is comfortable. I really love wearing this shirt. It's the one I look for every time in my drawer. And I wash it more often. And it's pretty hammered now. <laughs> so let's see here. I think that we could, if we kind of did this, maybe something more like this. I'm gonna put a circle on the line I'm thinking about. And then um, let's look at this for the back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna trace this line here. This one right here. And I'm just gonna kind of try and see like what am I doing to this back to make it work? You know, like I've increased the neck. So I could come down here. So yeah, if I come down here, the amount I've increased the front neck and that I didn't change the back armhole at all, 
I can get this on here without changing the lengths of each. So I'm matching up my intersection here, which is the one I didn't change when I added this temporary line. So I'm lining up the intersection at the outer shoulder here. And I'm lining up this new line to be on the neckline lower on the back, the amount I raised it on the front so that they're about the same. Now I'm just trying to keep it in the same spot. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm using the right line. Nothing like doing all the work and then you, you use the wrong line. I don't know anyone who's done that. Nah. All right, so now let's remove some of these other lines so we don't confuse ourselves. And then we're going to true up our front and use it to draft back. And we want to make sure we have pretty much right angles at these intersections. I know it'll sew together without the right angle, but I'll show you why I harp on this all the time because you really do need that right angle. Otherwise you're trimming it off at your sewing machine anyway, because you don't know what to do with the point you've created. So maybe I'll make this a little scooped here since I'm making it a fold, folded over him. And I'll think about maybe if I want to do binding, I haven't done that on my new machine yet. So I'm not sure it's the best thing to, to ensure the success of my garment if it's my first time doing binding on there. Now let's look at our juncture. So we're going to overlap our shoulder here, just like this. Now we know the front, where it goes right there, right? So now we have a nice smooth transition right here. That's great. Stop moving. Now we just need to make sure we have it on the neckline as well. Oh my gosh. and that it's the same width. So look, I lost a little bit of my seam allowance, hem allowance there. So we'll add a little bit back there. There we go. Now we have our cut lines. And our jammy top is done. You need to make sure that you write on your pattern pieces, the seam allowance you selected, hem allowances you decided on so you don't forget, you know? <laughs> yeah, I think knitting is something anyone can do. Just stay away from the perfectionist knitters that get a little bit too kooky about the right way to do things. <laughs> oh my gosh, Terry, leather gloves. Would you hand sew those? Uh, these are pattern cutting scissors. They, um, they are linked in my description, I'm pretty sure, under the pattern drafting tools. So the thing about these is, and these are the ones I got in my college. I have two pairs, but the second pair I bought, they just don't feel the same. Um, this is, the company is a Vebros. See that? I've had these since I was 18 years old. I love them. I always put my finger right here when I'm using them. But the reason that these are for pattern drafting is because the blades are so short and the handle so long, it really gives you some good maneuverability for curves and things. You'll see I always angle them like this with the lower bit blade into the pattern a little bit. And that's just so that I cut the bottom layer of the paper 
at the same spot as I'm cutting the top layer so that the two layers line up on one on top of the other. It's not as critical on this thin paper, but it is on the thicker paper, which the manila and stuff like that. <laughs> A dog who was using what? Wait. What was the dog using? I thought you were talking about knitting gloves. What about some talking talking buttons so my kitties can be like Billy talk? Oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I see those on TikTok. <laughs> I saw a little dog call their owner an a-hole the other day. <laughs> I'm like, why would you make a button for that? He's like, I want a treat. And she was like, no, you can't have a treat. And she was like. <laughs> All right, so let's put our green line and mark it up. So we have our right angles here because if you don't, you're gonna have a little point. Whoop! You don't want that on your pattern. Same with your hem. It's gotta be right angle. And at the armhole, it's the exact same thing. When you go to sew it, you will not leave that point in there. So there are lots of times where these junctures here, these three, are really hard to get a right angle. And you just gotta do your best. But just know that if you don't, you're gonna be trimming it off anyway. So you might as well trim it off on the pattern and not be sitting there at the machine going, ooh, this doesn't look quite right. Did I do something wrong? Figure it out now. Don't put it off later. Be kind to your future self, you know? Okay. Jammy tank, finally. One back, three H and seams. Uh, three eighths inch armhole neck cams, half inch hem. You can see it's got that little swoop. And we'll do the same on the front. Yeah, there's a for swearing dogs. Like, I'm the one who's going to swear at my dog. Thank you. Uh, jammy tank one front. I still need to suss this out here, make sure I can get this little curve with my cover stitch because, yeah, that looks kind of tight. Three eighths inch seams, three eighths inch hems, neck, armhole, half inch hem. All right. The other thing I like to do sometimes if I don't want to write all that out is I can see right here this these seam lines and I'll just write it in three eighths, three eighths, three eighths, half inch, things like that. Uh, I used to do, I later in my uh, freelance pattern drafting, I started doing this and people were like, I love that. Anytime a uh, factory got it, they were like, it, it's so great because a lot of times you wouldn't write all this on um, your pattern piece. You would write it on the spec sheets. And the spec package in a minimal form travels around with the pattern and the garment, but that the, scene, the sewer that has the garment and maybe the issue they're dealing with might be 20 machines away from where it sits. And so if the if they're kind of trying to get a quick answer and they're looking at the, the whoever's the, the um, you know, the floor supervisor is, they'll sometimes be like, oh, and they'll, they can just see it. It's so great. They'll be like, no, 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 that's three eighths, you know, or just that visual will remind them. It's great. I'm going to Sydney. Yeah. Right. Thank you. If you do a lot of, uh, paper cutting Libby and you need to do curves, I, I recommend them. They're really, they're really useful. Thank you, Ray. I appreciate it. I can't mean to make that alert longer so we get your kitty cat for longer. All right, so now let's make a version have a sleeve. Because look, it's a it's a pretty different armhole. So here is my center back. Here's my center front. 
So it's quite different, right? Where's the zero, zero point? What am I gonna, which one's gonna be changed, you know? And look at the, the angle of that. You know, lots of ways to get there. And then I have this little sleeve. I'm gonna try and make my armhole of my pajama tank the exact same as this, so I can just use this pat pattern interchangeable. Yeah, kitty for Ray. <laughs> okay, so let's, how do I wanna start? Let's compare our center back. So what would I consider the point where the style, style lines are going out or in from, you know, where is my baseline of the pattern? Because this isn't my block. This is a scoop neck tee. So essentially the difference between a block and a style is the block has <clears throat> no um, style lines, obviously, or things like, oh, let's make this neck deeper or this shoulder in, you know, it's going to be your body. Essentially, hopefully, your block is the neutral position, right? My scoop neck is not a block. It is the scoop neck tee that I made using a Moneta, right? No, I can change the length, Mrs. Necro. Yeah, I can change it. <laughs> I can customize the sound. But they're all the ones you've heard, and some of them are really annoying. I, you guys would thank me what I spare you from. It's all geared towards gaming. Um, so a lot of times people, I see this error a lot where they'll use the center, the, the neck at the center back or center front as the zero, zero point, but that's not it, right? This is obviously like, you can't just line up your center bag. Look, they're almost the same. And look, my shoulder is actually lining up, but that's just lucky. You know, like it is gonna work out pretty much. But where is the zero zero point on something like this? It's gonna be that shoulder because it's hanging from this point. This is non-negotiable. You can't really, you're not gonna raise and lower your shoulder to change styles. Your shoulder is your shoulder, right? That is, is that that's not gonna change. The only time it changes is when you get out to the armhole and then you're like, oh, maybe I wanna increase the diameter of the armhole. Maybe I'm looking for something dropped. Maybe I'm looking for something tight. Maybe I'm looking for something to come in from my um, shoulder blade, shoulders. Maybe I want it to go out and be kind of, you know, that kind of look. Um, and you know, sometimes they'll straighten them out because maybe there's no armhole seam and then you're going into that grown on sleeve type of thing. So essentially, and, and, and to be honest, it's not even this point technically because of the fact that this line right here can move up and down your neck, your shoulder up to your neck and away. So usually if you were using your, your block and making anything that was a style line in addition to your block, your zero zero point's gonna be like right here, it's gonna be your like bust armhole, right? Bust armhole center back Right there is your zero, zero point. And then everything happens from that point out or in. And this high point at shoulder is generally a really good place to look at as well. Barbara, I feel like that's a personal preference. I like to, on my block, I like to add ease almost as if I would be wearing it. That's just to save myself some time. I don't put a lot. Could, I like to make it so that I can actually put it on, but a lot of times it's pretty hard to put on your block because it's you, it's your skin. Like my dress form is a little bit bigger than me because it's a scan. Like they didn't dip me in a mold. They can't do that, it's a scan. So I'm trying to stand there, not you know breathing very much and moving. <laughs> and so it's a little bigger, right? All right, Terry, nice seeing ya. <laughs> One of the people has T-Rex sound when he gets fit. Yeah, exactly, Mrs. Necro. I know. You can upload some, but it costs to do that. So I just don't. Yeah, some of the default. Maybe we could pick them out one day. You can see what I've got. 
available. Um, so what, what I'm trying to say is like, you got to kind of pick where's the spot that's not going to change. And for us, it's going to be this spot right here, right? We know that the length, like not the length per se, but the, um, garment is not going to go up or down from this point right here. Yeah. Right. Barbara, I, I think like I would at least add an inch of ease to your block. You don't have to though. Like I said, it can be a second skin. Like if you were in the business of drafting uh, close fitting garments, like formal wear, you wouldn't want any ease on your block. It would be zero ease. Usually a block is zero ease. It is essentially a blueprint of your body. You're, it's like if you're, you could remove your skin and that's what it is. You can't put that thing on. It is almost impossible to put it on because you can't remove your layer of your skin. You know what I mean? Like you, it's like you. So since, you know, I'm usually just making them for me, I make my block so I can pretty much wear it. Or I have like, what I like always do is a darted blouse with a neck that goes like right along my collarbone. And then I put a set in sleeve where I like my armhole. And then I hang that garment always with my block pattern pieces. And so then I know, okay, if I want a sleeveless garment, I'm going to have to go up and in for the armhole. Whereas on a block, you would still be dropping a little bit of that armhole. You would be dropping it in and, you know, like down a little bit. Bye Elizabeth. Have a good rest of your day at work. So, um, I, hopefully that makes sense. So like a traditional block. Yeah, it is a second skin. There's no ease. It is literally a dress form of you. For me, I just feel like I don't really wear formal wear. I don't really do a lot of that. So it's fine for me if I have a garment that already has a little bit of ease and I can try on a garment and go, okay, where do I want it, my garment to go from here? Would I wear this garment out and about? No, because it's just does, it's like boring but at least I know where the armhole is and where the neckline is. So it just depends on what you think you're going to be drafting with your block. What's going to be the most neutral for you? What would make the most sense for the kinds of things you're going to use it for? All right, so let's get this going here. All right, so let's trace off. We know we pretty much want this neck and this shoulder right? We also know we pretty much want, uh, I'm going to use this a pencil for this. I kind of want this bottom too. I'm just really, really just want a sleeved version of this jammy tank. So we'll leave that. So this is the center back of the, um, jammy tank. And now I'm just going to try and make, put my scoop neck armhole on here. And so let's, and so this one has three eighths inch seams. If it had different seam allowances, that's okay. You just need to make sure you're lining it up at the same place. All right, so this has three eighths as well. The shoulders at a different angle. It also comes in a little bit more. So we're gonna try and get this little point here on the same line as this one here just to kind of give us a good idea of where this fits and so let's just trace this off like that so there's this armhole onto this garment and now let's blend it in and so this right here is my 3 8 inch seam line around the neck this is my 3 8 inch seam parallel to the shoulder I'm going to take this new shoulder line and intersect it with the line that's the seam allowance going around the neck, the hem there. We're talking like a 16th of an inch difference, so it's not critical. Don't worry about that. So, uh, block versus sloper, those are the exact same thing. People just call them different things. Um, so I love the term sloper, but I found that caused more confusion amongst the home sewing community. So I use block more often, but either it works. And then, um, when will we use when we start, when, which will we use when we start drafting with you, whatever you like. 
Maybe there is a distinction. Maybe people have come to think of block as your second skin and sloper as like a the version I make with a little bit of ease. I don't know. No one gave me the memo. <laughs> Whatever it means to you. And so I think, um, oh, I was going to um, have the May schedule on the screen. That's what I went came over here to do earlier and then I forgot to do it, I got distracted. Um, I posted the new May schedule. Let's see, I have it down. Oh my gosh, I was in such a stupor yesterday. All right. Um, so the last week of May, we're going to talk all about drafting our own locks. And I am going to test out the one that I made on the free sewing website. Just so you guys can kind of see how that one goes and how it works. Maybe you could give it. It's free. Um, and, and I'll try and have a few resources of other places that you can go and buy your own block or sloper. I'm probably not going to teach you guys how to draft your own block or sloper again because I've already done that. If you guys want to do that, we'll do that. But what I would really like it is, is if everybody had a starting point garment. And so I gave you the free sewing.org links and um, I think it was Mrs. Necro who gave us the Closet Historians YouTube video. She had some ideas. Anything like for me, like a darted bodice. For men, I would probably get like a, um, I mean, I think like a close fitting shirt would work and get rid of the yoke so that you have that. Oh, you have one is with these one. I have never heard that. So that's awesome. So there is some sort of way that I'm, <laughs> I'm pro it. You know, the thing is like in the garment industry, we don't really talk about blocks. We have our blocks, but they are company blocks. You know, it's kind of different. And a lot of times you have such a pattern library in established companies that your designer will come to you and say, we're going to do style S655, but we're going to put a V-neck on it this time with a cap sleeve and we're going to drop the hem an inch. And you instantly know what they're talking about. You know what I mean? They don't say from our block, we're going to design this because technic sometimes the designer, I hate to say this, but it is true. Designers really don't, a lot of designers don't know pattern drafting. The only reason I had such a great like experience is because I did both. And companies that you wanted to work for were the ones that knew the difference and knew that they would rather have a designer who is a pattern drafter. That's the company you want to work for because you know they're really serious and they really want their stuff to fit. <laughs> That's just my opinion though. It's probably kind of kind of a controversial opinion in, in some ways. All right, let's, let's just finish this up here. All right, so we have this little angle here. So let's just blend it in. That's okay. All right, and now let's um, cut this out. Normally I would like staple it all and make sure it's <laughs> really accurate. I think having a sleeved version is kind of nice in really hot climates because sometimes it's nice when you're kind of feeling sweaty to actually have a garment that is pulling the moisture away from your body rather than leaving it in your bed Oh, interesting. Ones with ease and ones without ease. So I would, con I would, that's so funny because that must be a, that would be really interesting to understand the um, entomology of that because I'm thinking about one of the books that I got a lot of knowledge from when I was learning has quarter blocks in the back for starting with pretty sure they're called slopers but I'm not sure now yeah exactly Malin yeah so the free sewing site has 
blocks for boobs and without boobs. So straight or curvy. So you, wherever you find you fit best, you can select that block and they make, they have um, the, what, what I did notice late was that there's two blocks and I couldn't quite tell the difference. I don't think it's like a short sleeve, long sleeve version, you know? They have a skirt, a trouser, and a block, like a bodice. Bodice is the same for men and women that women that turn, but you don't use the word bodice a lot in men's. I, you know, so I'm actually blanking on what we would have said. We just never used the term bodice for men. It is kind of a women's term, you know. The chainsaws are starting up. <clears throat> Yeah, and I, and I apologize that I'm using, like, gendered terms for some of these things. They just, it's so traditional and ingrained in my pattern drafting training. There wasn't a lot of non-gendered, there was none, <laughs> non-gendered things. But I will say, from the get-go, no one liked the word unisex. No one has ever liked that term, and I still stand by that. There, and I feel like, I feel like, personally, I feel like, and maybe I'm, I'm, I'm still learning about the terminology and like talking about gender versus sex, but with the term unisex, that fits everybody mediocre, in my opinion. It doesn't fit a straight body and it doesn't fit a curvy body very well. And so I shy away from those kinds of patterns because I am very curvy. And um, I think what that's going to do is going to be more of a straight fit. Because, and I think that this just comes from years being in the outdoor industry where you're working at a company that sells both men's and women's. So usually when you work in the fashion industry, you work in the women's, the kids, or the men's if they have all three. You're working in a specific kind of section of the company and outdoor the really big companies have those sections but in a lot of them they don't they just have like here's our line and pattern drafters do all of it and um and I and amongst the other pattern drafters who were all female where I was we fought for having fits for both body styles yeah, and it, even one size fits most is inaccurate. It does not fit anybody very well. It fits a straight body better than a curvy body, which means it's men's. That's what I would argue. But then still you're talking about gendered fit. So. <laughs> you can't really find, yeah, exactly. So I would just, yeah, pick what you feel Close, closely resembles your body, no matter how you identify, and work with that. And it won't be perfect out the gate. You're gonna probably have to make some adjustments, and then we can go from there. But I'm kind of excited about that. I really hope a lot of you do make your own kind of basic block of sorts. Yeah, they're straight eggs. Hey, hello, Nancy, how's it going? <laughs> Pajama top with cap sleeves. <laughs> All right, and so um, I'm gonna still do the hems here. Uh, the 3 8 inch seam on my armhole still works because that's what was already on the pattern for the seam allowance. Uh, and I had put on 3 8 inch hems. So that works perfect, doesn't it? Can you guys hear the chainsaw is it bugging you it's kind of far away all right so we have our back I promise I was never this messy you will yeah it's gonna be awesome I started having these fantasies of like oh wouldn't it be so cool if we a lot of folks made their own block or, you know, and I would help, I'll help you with it. I'm going to help you guys. You're not like hung out to try on this or anything. I'm going to help you. 
And then what if I had like, okay, here are, here's, we're going to do a garment each month. And here are the designs I'm thinking of. And here's some variations on each design, you know, and then you guys can go, we would draft it all together one week and sew it another week. And it was like a subscription program, you know, you can't hear them. Okay, good. They're kind of far now, but they're around here. I love the idea of that, but I was just like, gosh, is anyone else kind of sick of subscription stuff? Okay, this is the tank. This is the top. I'm going to make a pile on the ground. All right, and then we have the, we've done, we used this. Here's our tank and our top. Scrap fabric. I kind of love that because I love thinking of like, what if we designed a capsule wardrobe? You guys could even submit designs. I just love the idea of this. And then um, we could do men's and women's, or straight and curvy is really what I was thinking of. Cause we could even do, you can, yeah. <laughs> Are you wearing headphones too? <laughs> Your hearing is sensitive. Oh man, my husband and my daughter's is too. I call my daughter eagle ears. We would literally walk in the house sometimes. She'd be watching TV and I would swear it was on mute. I'm like, honey, can you hear that? Yeah. Oh, I didn't want to trace that. Oh, right. Well, now I'm tracing the whole thing because this is what I wanted. I wanted this down here. We could never talk about her. Ever. Even, I, we, you know... We talk smack about our kid. I think most parents do, you know. But for the most part, I wasn't talking smack all the time. I would just be like, oh, you know, don't forget she has that thing or blah, blah, blah. And she'd be like, what? <laughs> From like downstairs and in her bedroom. <laughs> like, oh. Right, Mrs. Necro? I know. You're tired of it too. I know. Exactly. This is all the other patterns. <laughs> okay, so let's see. This one, uh, so remember, this is my scoop neck t-shirt. This is my jammy tank. I'm leaving all this the same. I'm just going to adjust the armhole. So we're going to line up this shoulder here. Same idea. And let's see. Did I go in on the other one? I can't remember now. Let's see. This was the... Oh, this is the back. Okay. Yeah, so I left that the same. We're just trying to get this armhole the same. We went out a little bit here. We need this one. This is my back pajama top with cap sleeves. Let's write in our armhole here. Oh, really, Miss? Oh, man. Yeah, they're both sensitive with those. Like, if the dog keeps barking, like, Loki will sometimes just, like, hear something, and he'll be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, it's like, it's like this, it's not all constant. It's like this intermittent thing. And it's almost more annoying because he just won't stop. And you're just like, oh, do I need to tell him to stop? Oh, he stopped. Oh, he did it again. You know, and it's like, that drives them crazy. All right, so we'll line up this shoulder here. And let's kind of, let's see, where's my back here? Going to line this up. So this is my my scoop neck back. We're just gonna try and blend all this together. Because look at that, it's a little bit higher up. So we might have to drop down this armhole a little bit like that. And we lost this much here. So we might need to add that to our sleeve. All right. 
Yeah, that's what I was wondering, Malin. I was actually thinking it was East Coast, West Coast. Wait, one more, one more contribution. Susie Fear uses Sloper and Block interchangeably, and the skin tight one is the Moulage. Oh. I've heard of that term once or twice. I've never used that term, though. So I'm unfamiliar with the Moulage. Like, I've never used it, so... I don't think, I don't even think of it. I've heard that term before and I was like, oh, what's that? <laughs> this is my girl, that's so funny. You're like, no, I'm not pregnant. <laughs> Just smell something. Okay, so. I always circle the cut amount. It's just, it's just something you do in the pattern drafting world. You don't have to do that. You can do whatever you want. It's what I look for. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell, talk a little bit more about this here. Three-eighths inch seams, half inch hem. And then there's a three-eighths inch hem here too. Neck hem that I forgot to write on the back. All right, so this uh, jammy is obviously a little bit more, I wanna raise this up actually, that's what it is. I wasn't thinking there. I'm gonna raise this, uh, this armhole up a little bit. That's what I want, that's what I want right there. And um, I'm gonna make sure my side seams still match. A little bit different now. I, I didn't trim that off, right? It looks like I did trim that off a little bit. Hmm. Let's check this. Let's make sure we got this right. We have our tank. This is our front. This is our back. So we have our armhole. We have our armhole, just like that. Oh, that's where it is. I added it right there because I didn't want to change the shoulder slope of the um, armhole block. That's what it was. Okay, cool. So let's see. What do I think about that? Maybe I do want to. Maybe I will put this in here like that. See, when when you once you have your block, you won't have these little quandaries. Oh, he likes something not constant. He like, but he does things that aren't constant, like sounds wise. I have to put I have to put on noise when I go to sleep now. I'm getting unfocused here, sorry. I'm keeping this one here. Yeah, I think I will. I will keep that original shoulder slope of my jammy tank right here. Just like that. So once we all have our blocks, we won't have these little quandaries because I will also have all um, consistent blocks for things. Instead of like, you know, I used this one from the Moneta because I wanted it to be as easy as possible for people to use it or to make one themselves using something hopefully that they had. I still have this big difference here. Maybe I will go back a little further here. No, it's not what I want though. I kind of don't want that. I kind of want to put that back now. I don't want this to go away from the edge. 
I'm going to start this part over. I want to get this right. Yeah, right, Nancy, like serger and overlocker. I saw someone write on this woman's um, video, and it was a really good video on something about sergers and overlockers. I think it was when I was looking for that spot on my my over my cover stitch that I was that. Yeah, I, I think that's what it was. I was looking for that spot on my cover stitch. I couldn't figure out how to thread. And I ran across this gal who had the serger that I hadn't unboxed yet. And I like her videos when I come across them. And so I was watching it. And um, I saw in one of the comments, the gal was like, you know, you'd get a lot more views if you use the word serger and not overlocker. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? Why would she say something like that? <laughs> That's such a weird thing to say. <laughs> I was like, eh. eh. People know to search for both, you know? Uh, this is my center back, yeah, so... I want the uh, shoulder to go further out. This is what I'm doing right now. And I want I'm going to use the same line for the most part and get that same armhole hmm. <laughs> those are some big trees I'm really fussing fudging this a lot I don't really like fudging it but I am Cool. Yeah, I'm really excited too, Malin. Mine's sitting right here and it's been really hard not to do it, but I've just been really busy. I'm really excited and I feel like I really hope it works good because it would be such a great resource to refer you guys to. And I, I really wish they would add a like a donate button. I don't want to subscribe to their Patreon. Um, and so, you know what I mean? Like I would, I'd like to say, Hey everybody go and download their, their blog. It's free, but you might want to support them a little bit. You know what I mean? So I appreciate the resource, but I'm not going to sign up for their Patreon right now. So I just want to refer other people to do it. Yay, Mrs. Necro. Congratulations. Hi Louise. How's it going? That's awesome. All right, uh, back on track here. What I'm trying to do right now, I'm being really fussy about this because I'm using a garment to another garment. Neither are my block. So I'm, I am trying to decide, do I want to, I don't really want to change the shoulder angle of the jammy tank, even though it's probably not set in stone. I want to mimic the whole scoop neck T armhole so that the sleeve works really well I need that line to be out here I don't want it to be in here where the jammy tank is you don't want your sleeve starting there you know what I mean <laughs> oh nice Mullen how are your Dawn jeans going oh mine are done I should show you they're right there they turned out so great I got all the rivets on and the buttonhole all right so let's just line up our shoulder line here and I'm feeling for how parallel my centers are you know like do I want them parallel but then it swings out my shoulder these shoulders are just so different from one another maybe I'll line up my center back line up my shoulders and that is kind of that line that I just drew huh yeah it's kind of like that let's do that Let's uh, draw a straight line. Yeah, right, Dar? Me too. 
I just, those little monthly things really add up. I really appreciate people subscribing to my Patreon. It is literally what keeps me going. If I didn't have it, I would have to end right away. And um, so I appreciate it. So I don't really want to ask people to do one more subscription, donate, whatever thing as well. And their site is literally called freesewing.org, right? So, you know. Okay, so this is what I've decided to do. Here's my shoulder angle of my jammy tape. We're just going to keep that. But we're going to pull it out so that we definitely get to the edge of my shoulder armhole intersection. I don't really want to um, decrease my chest circumference of this. So I'm just trying to line up this armhole side seam juncture to where the jammy tank was, right? So I'm looking at those seam lines and that's where I'm at right now. So this was a pretty good line that I originally drew right here. So I'm just crossing off those so I don't accidentally cut those out. Let's get rid of this. Oh, Libby, you did. You were having some issues, right? How did it go? That's exciting. Yeah, the dart legs are in a weird spot on that free sewing dart on that block. You know, Libby talking about these scissors again, like, I think, like, while I love mine and I, I've been using them a long time, so I'm really comfortable, I really think even just ones like um, this are really good if you're just going to be using lightweight paper. But if you're going to do manila, that's when I would consider getting those because it's a lot less stress to cut manila with these than these. This is a, this is a lot harder. I would never do it. I'm not as accurate either. The blades are too close to my hands. Up, they go too far high up. All right, so I feel better about that. Center back, center front. Right, Mrs. Necro. I know. I know. I saw the the Handmaid's Tales coming out with another season. And I was like. <gasps> That's such a good series. And I really love so many of the uh, actresses in it. Oh, so good. Granted, I, we probably have a Hulu thing. We're not using it because of that very reason. Because my husband's like, oh, do you like Hulu? And I'll be like, yeah, but I don't watch it. And he'll be like, that's okay. We can get it. And I'm like, no, don't get it. <laughs> I'm not using it. <laughs> All right, and let's just... Fix our side seam here. I, I, I'm i doubting my side seams actually go together now, you know? Isn't that crazy? So I'm not going to cut all that off. I like it being scooped down in front. It's nice. That's how I ended up with Amazon Prime one year. I, I tried to did a trial when it was like really, really new. And I didn't know what it was. And I was like, hmm, this is interesting. And we live somewhere where we couldn't, we didn't have a lot of stores. Yeah, and I forgot to, I forgot to stop it. And my husband would be like, why do we have this? I'm like, oh, I forgot. He's like, oh, I love it. And I'm like, no, don't get used to that. <laughs> All right, so now we have our 
with cap sleeves. Wait. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. I just wrote, didn't write with cap sleeves. I was like, did I just alter? They look nicer on this side. That's awesome, Libby. I'm so excited for you. That's awesome. Marmalade Jeans Club. Where the dart legs meet the seam, I see a little outward V that people draw. So when you fold the dart, is there a formula for drawing that V? Um, there's not really a formula. What I like to, I mean, there is, but honestly on the side bust dart, the easiest thing to do is to tape a piece of paper there, fold the dart, line up the seam, be really careful and fold that seam up, um, press the dart, the direction you want it if you're gonna press it up or press it down there's strategies for or like reasons for both and then trim your side seam and then open it up and you should have your shape yeah Malin me too I had to do the same same thing oh what did Melinda say missed it we don't have cables so if you yeah yeah right it's so funny how people can share the accounts. All right, so this gets back on here. And then we have our sleeve we're borrowing. There you go, yeah. I've heard of uh, people like, that they will get, um, like I saw this one gal, she got this email from someone. She was like, hey, thanks for the free Netflix for the last three years. And because she was signing in on that person's account, complete stranger. <laughs> the person was like, what the heck? <laughs> I don't know how that happened. No idea. Maybe there was a hack. I'm just getting everything out of the way. We're going to cut these out now. Hang my scissors on the wall. All right, so here's my crazy fabrics. They're not that crazy, but they are kind of crazy. Uh, this one, because I like that it looks kind of like cross stitch. Uh, it doesn't at all, but there's some kind of illusion, you know? And then I have this one that looks like, kind of like tie-dye. I saw someone um, on the Sew Over 50 account make a dress out of this and it was so pretty. I was like, dang, I wish I would've made a dress. Super bouncy. I got all, the, wait, I think I got all these at hearts. So this one is really bouncy and stretchy. This one is more uh, cottony, but it's definitely um, <clears throat> an interlock. It is um, art gallery. Yeah, so it's 95 cotton, 5% spandex. And this one, this one's my craziest one. But it's pretty cool. It looks pretty, look at the cam, my face cam. The colors are more like that. It's pretty bright. So yeah, that's my plan. So I think I'll make two tanks and one with sleeves. And then I have all my underwear patterns here. Yeah, you know, Nancy, there is when you're doing like the hem turn up, but the hem shape is so much easier to figure out because you can do the, the right angle out. And with the dart, I don't know anyone who uses a formula. They just do that, you know? There was a way I would do it in the computer because it was really, it was a little trickier to figure out in the computer. Oh yeah, Mrs. Necro, yeah, it's really pretty. I like it. I love that blue. I think these are gonna make great jammy tops. Very wide. 
if you are adventurous, you could even cut them all out together. I am a big fat scaredy pants, so I'm not doing that. <laughs> Let's see, could I get, ooh, I can almost get my front across the, look at that. I mean my back. So if I can get my front and my back like that, look at all that room. I could make matching underwear. <laughs> this is gonna be awesome. I love it. So let's see, which one, is this one narrower? Let's check out my fabrics. This one goes the same, pretty much. This one. You guys can use your heart's discount even if it's not a project we're doing. This one's even wider. Well, hot diggity dog. I might get matching underwear on all of them. I have not, Sydney. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> right? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I would have done that, though, in my younger, more intrepid days. <laughs> I would have tried to do, I would have been like, oh, no, I'm going to do all three. I don't want to cut out all these separately. Now I know that that would take me longer to do. It would not save me time. It would be a disaster. It would be exactly why that shirt is torqued on the back that we tried to copy right and that's because oh shoot wait oh yeah yeah and that's because um maybe that is exactly why that one's like that right it's it was you know the layers of fabric maybe some that layer got a little wonky what do i, I like this this stuff here Oh well, I'm not gonna worry about it. I wanna get as much as I can out of this, so. So. So this is the one with cap sleeves. Should we do that one with cap sleeves? Let's tape our pieces. You're a notion collector? Who said that? Nancy, I knew that was you. You do like your equipment. All right. So Saturday I'll be cutting or sewing these out, sewing these up. <laughs> I'm a little hungry the last few days. And I keep forgetting my lunch here. It's so annoying. But ever since I moved to this office, I'm not in the routine of grabbing my lunch out of the freezer that's in our garage. Because the little fridge here has one of those freezers in it that's tiny. And I don't wanna take up the whole freezer with my lunches, you know? And pretty much nobody's like here but me most of the time. But still, I just don't wanna be that person you know and so um I'm supposed to bring my lunch every day if I don't bring leftovers or something like that or make a sandwich and I wasn't feeling good yesterday so yeah I didn't make any lunches and so this is like the third time in a row coming up here that I have forgotten my lunch and the lunch variety in paradise is pretty much burgers or burritos and I'm a big burrito fan I'm totally fine with that but we eat them a lot so I'm a little hungry I had some chips before oh wow yeah those striped uh, undergarments you did Melin that would those were such a that was such a cute set I love love what you did Yeah, and they're cute. I love that they're all striped, but they're all a little different. I have a 
mini fridge. It's even in my garage right now, Sydney, but I don't really have room in here to add it, you know? I could put it in one of the empty offices probably because they're all unlocked. But I feel kind of weird doing that. I don't know. I think I'm just going to go with getting as much as I, I can. Who asked if that I wanted the dark part to top? Beverly. Yeah, so I think I'm going to try and just get as much as I can out of this. So this is how it is because that dark thing is down the middle of the whole fabric. And I have this light section at the top and the bottom. I like this part too. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to um, kind of match it on the, the back there too. And then I'll have room for sleeves and underwears. Oh boy, stop trimming the pattern, Ceramy. Oh boy, I hate cutting on a, under a camera. It's very tricky, very tricky. <laughs> How awkward can I make this? Oh my gosh, I've just cut so much on my pattern now. If Rayanne was watching, she would definitely say something in chat. This is the thing I always told her, never cut my patterns, meaning like our designs, never cut my patterns like this. Always trace them off, but they were always in a heavier weight paper. So you could, this is lightweight. <laughs> Your apron curtains and pajamas are awesome. <laughs> All right, so this one is one with a sleeve. So is this pattern here. I don't really feel like I have to match the stripes, but I am matching the um, kind of the fabric colors. Nice and lightweight, nothing pulling. I don't want to distort the fabric. What underwear pattern do I like? Um, I don't, I, I traced my own last year when we did the underwear stream, but we got so, I got so many great suggestions for underwear. Malin is a good one to ask. She's made a lot and she really, yeah, she really likes the Kikis. Um, if you want to share your Instagram, Malin, I don't know if you're interested in sharing your Instagram. You can because she sews lots of things like that. But I got a lot of suggestions for patterns. And then I just ended up copying my own because I like the way mine fit. And that was like last August. would be. It's probably in the knit playlist section. Or you can just look at my website and I probably list, maybe, I don't know. That's hard to remember. I am one of those people, I am kind of one of those rare people that's in the moment. Once I do it, it's out of my head. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Okay. Cut this piece off. I don't want it to fall or pull on this fabric, so let's pull this out of the way here. I pre-washed these all last summer. I've been waiting to do this for a while. Was it last summer? Yeah, I think it was like last August. No, maybe not last. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. All right, so let's see what we got left here. Yeah, really, really cute. Got a lot. I may have gotten about a yard and a half. I know better than to assume a yard fits me. When I was smaller a yard was a plenty for doing projects like this it's not anymore <laughs> so 
so yeah, I traced my underwear pattern and I have two styles, but either works pretty good for me. I think I'm gonna do this one here because I think the stretch is more for this one here. So here's some of the ones that Christy, who I don't think you've met Libby, but she used to come to the stream a lot. Um, and I know she's been taking Instagram breaks, so I don't see her much on there either, but she went down this really big underwear and bra making rabbit hole. And then she was really kind and sent me a um, gift of a bunch of her traced off patterns or some patterns she had tried. And these were two, the Brava bottoms, these are ones she recommended. Oh, Bravo. Bravo bottoms. And then she also sent me this vintage quick sew undies. And it's really sweet. Like she has little notes on them, which was really cool. And then uh, this is a free pattern by Blank Slate. And I know Megan Nielsen has the Acacia underwear as well. That's it, right? Acacia, you guys? There's no shortage of underwear patterns out there. That's for sure. And I think that's why I ended up making my own because I got a little bit overwhelmed by so many of the possibilities. It's just occurring to me how <laughs> this fabric as underwear is kind of weird. Like I was just thinking about putting these front right here and I don't know you guys, it looks like splotchy paint. <laughs> like this right here is the crotch. <laughs> Boy, let's try and, <laughs> I don't know now. <laughs> oh, this would be the crotch. This would be the front. Okay, I can handle that. I can handle that dark part being the crotch. <laughs> oh man. Oh, plenty of room. Plenty of room. This is so cool. I can make two pairs if I need sleeves. that up there I like those colors a little better I mean nobody's really gonna see these but me but still you know yeah though at least no matter what pattern I use the sewing is pretty much identical for all the underwear and that's also why I didn't mind using my own pattern because uh, the sewing is pretty much the same across the board. Does anyone here sew their underwear with only a serger and cover stitch and no zigzag? Because that's what I want to do. I'm going to notch. I don't need a notch there. I know that's the back. All right, so I think I'm just gonna do this. I think I need two of these as well. All right, boy, I really can get a lot out of this fabric. Pretty cool. I'll probably use my single needle too to kind of tack down some of the seams, but I'd really like to use just my surgery and cover stitch to assemble these and not a zigzag at all. And I've been thinking about like feet. I wonder if there's a foot that would make my machine a zigzag. Oh, okay, Rebecca. That's great. Right, Nancy? I know the fabric placement. <laughs> Period. <laughs> that's exactly. That's what I was like. Hmm. This fabric is uh, suggestive.
I love the fact that I'm going to have matching underwear to my jammies, though. <laughs> it's like having bloomers. I'm just going to notch the front of this little guy here. It's pretty obvious, though, you know? You can't get the front to go to the back. I really should trace this onto the fabric rather than cutting around my pattern piece, but I break the rules too. Did I already throw that in the... Here it is. Oh man, that stuff looks like trash. Like literally I would throw that away, you know? Alright. Jammies. Now we just need to do our sleeves and we're done with this fabric. Oh, you like to close the elastic? Okay. Serger with elastic foot cover stitch to finish. Okay. Look at how much I have left. I think I can get two pairs of underwear out of this. What a great value for your money. You know? Where's my sleeve pattern? Like, say this fabric is $20 a yard. For twenty, for thirty dollars, I'm gonna be able to get a jammy top, two pair, and two pairs of underwear. That's pretty good for home made, right? I think so. For fabric that's nice, they're yelling out there. Can you guys hear that? Mini dresses with matching underwear. Yes. Yeah. Remember my knit print underwear I made and they match my knit print dress? <laughs> and I do wear those together. <laughs> I think it's funny. I like it. Let's get this. Uh, Trying to keep it nice and relaxed so that I'm staying on green. There we go. I think, is this a, uh, yeah, it's a symmetrical so there's no front and back to the sleeve. You see that a lot with uh, knit tees. There's not really a whole lot of advantage to making a, a front and a back unless you're doing some pretty serious fitting. All right. I've seen other, some folks will take all their scraps too and make underwear. So like the fronts and backs and crotches are all different. I won't put you through me cutting another one out. I'll just cut this later. I'll do my move on to my other fabrics here and my sleeveless. Knickers galore. <laughs> Did you ever think you'd type that? So this fabric feels really different like it's a little bit stiffer it's still really soft and I think you can you kind of know like just by looking at how it rolls exactly what this kind of fabric is like they are cross grain Barbara did I cut it crooked <laughs> Um, would I ever consider doing bras? Um, I kind of would. Honestly, they're just so, ex it's so expensive to get all the stuff you need. You know, like, yes, is it cheaper maybe compared to buying your bra, um, like Victoria's Secret bras over and over. If you got kind of into it and you had all your supplies. But, um, I have bras that fit me really good. And there's so many great folks out there doing it that I don't really feel like... I have a whole lot to add 
to the conversation, except the fact that I'm a noob and sometimes noobs are really good at um, being good content because they're learning too. And so they're addressing all the beginning questions that we're all wondering about, you know? <laughs> I'm not opposed to it. I'll sew anything. I, I like to sew anything. But honestly, yeah, just getting all the stuff for it, like the amount of money I spent getting my underwear elastic and some fabrics last year. Oh, that's right. I don't, I want one of those um, crotch panels to be cotton, not that stuff. And I have some right here just for that. Like those, those, I, I think the, when I, I went to um, bra maker's supply the other day, wait, bra builder's supply, bra maker, one of those places. And I was looking at fabric cause I was going to order some for making underwear and I just couldn't bring myself to it. It was so expensive and I didn't have my pattern pieces with me. So I was like, all right, they sell it in really weird quantities. Like they don't sell it in linear yardage. It's like half yard pieces or whole yard pieces. And even if you buy four yards, it's all four one yard pieces. So it's very, um, uh, not a very good, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's not a good use of the fabric because I might be able to get a whole extra pair if I could straddle between those two yards, right? So. I didn't have the pattern with me at the time. I was at home, and so I was like, you know, this might be a good idea to have the pattern handy, see what your best bet is, which one you like. You are Dar, so have you made any? And see, for my sports bra, I have a she fit bra, and I love it. I used to always have this champion bra that I really liked, but I've gotten to the point where I, I don't like any bounce. So I've been a runner. Some women don't mind bounce. I like zero bounce. <laughs> I do not like that feeling at all. It does not feel good at all to me. And so finding a zero bounce, um, high impact bra has always been really hard. And it is also one of the major detractors. Sometimes I don't want to go on a run because I don't want to put my bra on because pulling it over my shoulders and doing that whole thing is so infuriating. You sometimes get trapped. One time I got trapped in one in a dressing room and I have like a little skin tag, you know, like those little skin tags, like have like one or two on my body total. It, I got it, it ripped off. Like my little skin tag ripped off on the dress form. So then I was like, wow, I can't, I couldn't get out of the bra. I could not figure it out. I was so, I was like near tears. And so that whole feeling of like trying to get it off, you know, and get it on, that sometimes is a detractor for me to even go work out. And so I finally got really frustrated. I stopped buying them from Title IX because they had the same old, same old for years and years. And the one, the last couple of times I had bought my tried and true, it wasn't tried and true anymore. I tried to buying it from REI, same thing. I was just like, all right, this I'm I'm done. I've got to find something new. And I went to the she. I found she fit. And I, it's it's like a seventy five dollar bra, but it zips up. And I never thought I'd want to zip up bra, and now I will never have anything else. It's amazing. I literally just put it on, zip it up, <laughs> hook hook zip. It's so easy. None of this like oh, I'm stuck. And when you're sweaty and you're like ready to like you're starving and sweaty and you're done and you just want to get in the shower go and go eat and you have to spend 10 minutes taking off your bra uh uh sorry i have a lot to say about that i've always had big boobs and i hate it there's no way i could do that nancy i i used to be able to do that when i was younger i can't anymore and um and i've had a breast reduction been a constant issue for me I'm so jealous of that that's what I've always wanted to be I've always wanted a flat chest fully flat because <laughs> I was always athletic and now I'm just barely athletic because it's kind of a detractor because it's just I hate it okay that was the front <laughs> let me make sure I'm keeping them straight I also don't like, um, uh, are the she fit ones comfy? Yes. 
And the other thing about them is what I really like about them is that they're really adjustable. So the band across is a Velcro strap. So you can Velcro, you can adjust everything without contorting. And then there's strap, these right here also adjust. So you lift them up and then you can cinch them down. Once I had my bras, these and this adjusted, I never have to change that. But if you're someone who, maybe you have mobility issues in your shoulders or your arms, you can just undo those and get completely out of your bra without having any um, danger of hurting yourself, which is really nice. And I don't like uniboob. I don't like all that sweat. I don't like touching. I'm really picky. <laughs> I'm not... I, you guys rarely hear me talk like that, probably, but it's true. I have a lot of feelings about jog bras. This doesn't look like a one-way fabric to me. Does it look like a one-way fabric to you? Let's see. Let's see. I know what we'll do. We'll do this. Yeah, I like the she fit. I, I've actually gone into their Instagram ads when they used to pop up for me. They don't anymore. Um, okay, I'm gonna put this piece upside down next to this. Does it look the same? It does. Okay, cool. Um, and I would see people go, oh my gosh, that's way too expensive, blah, blah, blah. And I've like commented on them like, you guys are crazy. Do you know what kind of engineering it takes to do the kind of pattern drafting this takes? And they fit all kinds of bodies, all sizes of bodies and shapes. Oh, right, it's not waffle at all. Look at it. <laughs> it's got these little speckles. That's what kind of gives me the cross stitch vibes. Doesn't look anything look cross stitch. It does, Melinda, oh shoot. It looks one way. See, it did to me until I turned this upside down. And then I was like, oh, I. It's hard to tell the difference between these two. So this is this is this going the other way, upside. It's not the same. It's not the same. Is it really not? Does it bug? Yeah, I'm a double D. Yes. Yeah, your brush on your, yes, try it. Look at the green, I know, but is that really bug us that much? Like, is it, it's a jammy top. <laughs> yeah, I guess they're different, but it doesn't look upside down. It's one way. The gray lines, fine. God, you guys are so mean. The green wise, the yeah, they look like um, they look like serger. I see that it's one way, but it doesn't look like it would be too big of a deal to flip my pattern over. <laughs> Why are you guys watching? <laughs> Just don't look. <laughs> Good thing Terry's not here. You didn't notice. Oh, the dark splashes look like wishbones. These right here. It looks like it's supposed to look like, I don't know, like ripped fabric. It doesn't bug me, but um, I will, if I can get, um, I think I can get a pair of underwear in this, right? As long as I can get, you know. Yeah, and I can. So I'm fine with that. Yeah, and I think, yeah, you're right. Like these repeating, this the repeat's pretty small. Yeah, you're right. That would be very different. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, that's, and I bet on camera that's really obvious. My insurance did cover it, Mrs. Necro. I asked. <laughs> Fine. Um, my insurance did cover it, Mrs. Necro. 
and I was young. Uh, because of back issues and dents in my shoulders. So, yeah, I agree, Malin. The fabric is one way, not a too, not a big deal on the jammies, but I'll do it. It'll be fine. I think you're right. The wishbone thing is a really good example of why this is would be really weird looking. But you guys aren't allowed in my bedroom anyway, so. Wah. <laughs> I'm not being the most accurate when I'm cutting these, are I? Am I? Exactly. I, it looked to me, even these flowers looked one way. They, they look almost like, they looked, they just looked like they were one way. It didn't look like they were, they just looked different. Yeah, they made me a, uh, I think they made me a B, but I kept growing. I'm a double D now, but I, I'm, I'm fine with my size right now. And I, I was able to breastfeed on one side too. So I don't know how old you are, if you have kids, if you're interested in that, but it, it is possible. And I'm totally happy to talk to anybody who wants to go through that experience privately. It was it was pretty monumental for me. I'm really thankful I did it. All right. I'm gonna cut two pairs of jammies out here. Uh, and Well, you know what I'm gonna do? I am going to flip these, but I'm gonna make sure when I sew them that I do the wishbones that are one way with one pair, you know, and the other with the other. Oh my God, bralette, <laughs> there's no way. I don't think she, if she wants a breast reduction, I doubt she can use a bralette either. Yeah. Those are, uh, especially, like, you know how they have those ones at um, places where they have the, the little bit of foam, and they say they're not to pad it, but to, to shape the bra. I hated that. I'm like, this makes me look bigger. Oh, no, it's not there to increase your size. I'm like, I'm not dumb or blind, and I'm very sensitive to this topic. Please don't tell me that it's not making me look bigger. I don't want to look bigger. And, uh... They would never have a bra in my size that didn't have that. How much do you have to go off? Well, ooh, Martina, I don't know. I think like for underwear, you can probably go a little bit off grain because there's a lot of places that are um, stabilizing the garment. and. You saw, I don't know if you were here at the beginning. Did you see when I was tracing my jammy pajama top? It was really bad on the back and it doesn't bug me when I'm wearing it. Four boobs, yeah, right? And you have two when it's two uniboobs, right? <laughs> so what if I did this one upside down, but then I matched this bottom with this layer and this one with that layer? Clever, Sammy. And we only need one of these. Gosh, could I get one more pair? You know, it's just so like, I'm feeling greedy now. Because I might be able to get one right here. Look at that. Right? I might be asking too much. on my grain line here I can see it better there yeah right dart it's life-changing I was so excited 
You know, I hated, I was a vol in the volleyball team in high school, and all the guys would come and watch our practices only because of me. Because they just wanted to see me bounce around out there. It was so annoying. So gross. Okay, so I have this one will go with the one on the bottom, and then this one will go with the one on the top. Yeah, because can see this wishbone and this wishbone. Okay. Oh, I like this fabric for underwear. It looks really cute. <laughs> yeah, so did you see how bad that one was, Martina? It, you know, when I think about it, that top does pull a little bit funny. Maybe that's why. I just figure it's me sitting weird or something, you know? Oh yeah, so your rib might need that surgery, you know, like that might help your ribs. I don't know. So crotch guess it. <laughs> the gut, what? Oh, wait, what? Wait, Sydney, wait a minute. So, got a new pair of workout pants that are a floral print. Blues, greens, some plant bra planty browns. <laughs> First time I went to the bathroom, I freaked out. The gusset was the right side of, <laughs> of the fabric, but it browns. <laughs> yeah, I've definitely, there's a few things I have where, um, like I put in a, a popover placket, I think like on my Cheyenne tunic, and there's something about the way the print is that it looks like there's a tear in the fabric and it's just the white print and it's just right where it's at and it's always a shadow and every time I fall for it, I look at it and I'm like, what happened here? Oh, nothing happened here. All right, you go with you. And you go with you. That worked out pretty cool, huh? And then we just need the crotch gusset or the I guess that's what you call it the crotch panel not gonna work okay get rid of that and get rid of all this hmm I'm like can I get another pair out <laughs> like look at that I could get no I can't I can't I can't well <laughs> no there look how big, big my butt is like that's a lot of fabric this is this way this is this way all right perfect I have these little dots that I'm kind of going by for green line even though printing can be a little off that'll be kind of enough I don't think being off grain on a pair of underwear is going to be a huge deal. Uh, a little bit, you know? Alright. Next fabric. <laughs> you don't remember messing your pants. <laughs> yeah, that's not something you would forget. Oh, your quilt cut. Woo. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea, Melinda. Because you don't need your quilt coat until the end of summer. That's exciting. Very exciting. What dress patterns are you thinking? Right, Sydney? I know. You just use your scraps for underwear. I saw that too, and I was like, Oh, that's awesome. I have so many knit scraps. It's, I always have this really awkward amount left. I don't make thongs, so I don't know how that would work. So, yeah. Maybe I think if you did do thongs or maybe, um, like, I like high coverage, so. All right. This is a really fun print. All these fabrics I got from Hearts. Uh, I do Libby, but I'm going to do them in this, that, what, um, some cotton. In fact, I want to look and see if I have black cotton. I bought 
this weird stuff last summer. And I don't think I knew what this was when I ordered it. Like, I've still kind of been wondering what this is. It's really slinky and it's not stretchy. I'm gonna see if I have some black cotton knit for the, for the right side, like towards my body. If not, I'll just use that white one. That's what I bought it for, and I should have thought of doing black. It's just better, <laughs> you know? Just looking at my green line there. Try and keep it all parallel. Pulls in a little bit. The Marcel and the Atelier Renette double gauze on there. Oh. I, I remembered looking at the Marcel. I can't remember which one it is, but I remember looking at it. So, um, Melinda, I think it's because of you that I went and found that Polaroid quilt block. Capitola pol <laughs> Polaroid one. It sounds sweaty. Yeah, that stuff would be sweaty. Totally. You're right. You got it. You hit the nail on the head. That's a that's definitely a pattern I want to do quote wise. Oh yeah, maybe. Maybe Sydney could do that. Yeah, I think you could color block. That's a good idea. Flat front bag tears. Oh, yeah. That'll be really cute, Melinda. That'll be really cute on you. I love it. Where's my weights? I'm getting punchy. I'm getting punchy. I can't believe you guys are still watching me cut this out, like, so badly here. Yeah, that Polaroid block is so fun. I kind of want to upload fabric on Spoonflower that's actual photos and print it out like that and then make it. I thought that'd be kind of fun. That could be a, well, <coughs> excuse me. So I don't know if you guys uh, heard at the beginning, I had a couple of things I went over. Uh, my new wireless mic came, but it's not syncing up to my computer. So I, I think I might have the wrong, they didn't send the right cord or something. I'm not sure. So um, that's underway though. And I'm pretty excited. Like I'll have a wireless mic, hopefully. And then um, I got a new, I got a mailing address. So you can send me a postcard now probably in the description at the very, very bottom of my whole huge long description now. Um, it's a PO box, so it's US mail. And then um, I'm going to try a little bit of hand stitching and I'm gonna make the March top, March top by <laughs> Helen's Closet. And I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna bring that as my project while I'm away next week. So I'm gonna not be streaming next week. That's my other thing. But hopefully I will have some uploaded videos for you guys. I posted a schedule on the community tab here on YouTube and on Instagram. I'm trying to find that right balance of like If I would have cut all of them out together, I wouldn't have been able to have enough for underwear either, you know? Let's see. There we 
we go. Oh. Is that hound's tooth? Is it a plaid? Because I made a dress out of a plaid that also has a hound's tooth. This is a straight diagonal stripe or hound's tooth. And it's cats. So it's really hard to see until you get close and you're like, oh, that's cats in a plaid fabric. And I made a Moneta dress out of it. I love it. I love that fabric. And it's in like oranges, like very autumnal colors. Is that the same one? It's, it's so cute. I would say like the plaid is like, Oh no, stop that, stop that. Uh, about an inch. Oh my god, I am cutting this so badly. Sorry guys. Just don't look. Don't look. Just go get a glass of iced tea right now. I am such a bad influence right now. Oh, it's black, white, and gray. Oh, I don't think I've seen that one. Oh yeah, they had a recipe thing they did. Oh, exactly, yeah. Oh yeah, I know I could, but I'd have to figure out like the size and the spacing and everything and, you know, and upload it all and bleh. I could print it on my printer, but you know, I think their printing would be better than my printer. So. Let's see. I have Feel like I have a lot more of this one not a lot more but even an inch or two more makes a difference you know like in width I'm so excited I'm gonna get new underwear too I kind of need it get rid of all this This is what they taught us in college. <laughs> and I just laugh because you could do this for hours and it's just never, ever. You just create more other places, but it's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's true, Louise. Favorite them. That's what I do. You kind of get the hang of who has printed out their pattern and who hasn't you know because some folks I think they just upload designs without testing them and that's a danger you know you don't want to buy that yeah and so when I'm looking for a fabric I will often be very very spontaneous and just go, this is it, and I don't think about it because it's so overwhelming with the amount of stuff on there. So I'm just looking at the fold here because I, I got these lined up and there's no torquing on my fabric. Because see, even though that this is, this is my cut edge right here. And so even though there's this angle right here, I didn't line up this corner to this corner because it would have put torque lines on my fabric so I put the selvages lined up to where all of this is laying flat, all this fabric is laying flat. Yeah, you can see these little like wrinkles. They really show up on the camera, but they're, they're just kind of like, see, they're, they're not really wrinkles. It's just kind of, it's like wrinkles. Uh, they are wrinkles, they're not torque lines. You know, like wrinkles, like that's how the fabric got shoved into a bin and it's wrinkled now. <laughs> that's got kind of wrinkle. So I can count on this as a grain line. And then this over here is a green line. 12 and a half and 12 and a half. There we go. Ooh. Dang, I feel like. I don't think I can sew all this on Saturday. I'm gonna have stuff sitting in a bin here that still needs to be sewn, but at least it's all cut, right? I 
All right. Let's cut you off and you, all right. And So we're gonna get six pairs of underwear, right? So I need six of those cotton things. That's pretty cool. I can do it. Let's see. <laughs> Whack-a-mole, totally. So I posted a update in Patreon. Was that um, day before yesterday? I was so out of it yesterday. I got my second vaccine on um, Tuesday afternoon and I got so achy and kind of out of it yesterday that um, I couldn't even meet the Patreon folks yesterday. Um, so it, it was, I was a little out of it and um, But, what did you, oh, but I wanted to say, I was, some folks didn't realize we're having a blazer sew along at the end of Saturday, summer, <laughs> and Saturday, no, not the end of Saturday. So if you're, you're, anyone's welcome to do that. You can also follow my Patreon without being a subscriber and paying any money. I don't know if you guys know about that. You can do that with anybody, anybody you like that you're just like, I can't afford to do their Patreon but you like the person, you may not see all their posts because we have the option of showing posts specific to tiers and patrons. Good night, Malin. Sleep well. Get your jammies on. Um, but you can follow mine and then uh, there will always be, always be like a little teaser. So even if you can't see what I wrote, you'll know what it was about. But like this one, I think I made that available to everybody. And there is a blazer so along. And I'm going to be doing the cashmere at um, Auburn. But you can do whatever blazer you want. I think like the Jessica. And um, there are others that are just simple traditional blazer styles. Lots of companies have made them. You know? And you can... Um, I think the sewing is gonna be really similar no matter what you choose, which style or whatever. So you're welcome to join us. And that'll be at the end of summer. I've made like, I don't know, maybe one or two suit coats in my life. I am not an expert in it. We're gonna do it together. I'm not afraid. <laughs> what are you asking about woven? Okay, so I need six of these little guys. Two, three, four, five. Okay. Let's uh, cut a bunch of these off. That's the same with me, Nancy. On my first one, I didn't, I barely even had a bruise on my arm. <laughs> I was like, did I really get it? <laughs> And both my husband and daughter felt crummy for both of them. <laughs> I'm looking at the grain line on this fabric. It's probably risky doing it that way, huh? But it's just a little cotton crotch lining bit. There's four. I don't think I can get two more out of this without going off grain. But totally worth it. I'm glad I got it, you know. I have a couple of people in my life that are super high risk, so I'm really glad. I don't have to worry as much now. All right. Oh, so satisfying to cut through this many layers of fabric. It's only, f oh wait, two, it's only four. Yeah, I thought it was five for a second there. Hi Val, how's it going? All right, Ursula, see you Saturday. <laughs> We're well, Val, welcome, welcome. 
kind of winding down here. I cut out, I copied my pajama top and then I made a version with sleeves. And um, now I've cut them out. And um, I also cut some matching underwear. <laughs> and now I'm cutting out the cotton liner part of the underwear. Kind of cavalierly as well, if you haven't noticed. My last one right there. The only black knit I have is a is like a, a bamboo or tencel, not a cotton. That's what I remembered. Okay. So I have enough of those for six pairs, but I still need to cut out one pair because I put that fabric aside for you guys. So you don't have to sit through it. But where is it? Is this it right here? I'm gonna cut one more out. Um, this is the Colette Myrna. It's a dress, floor length dress. Oh, Melinda. Melinda, thanks for becoming a patron. That's very nice of you. Did you know you'd get an alert for that? Oh, I didn't move this back, sorry. But I guess you could see that it's a dress. I really like this dress. I, I really miss Colette patterns. You know? I did the um, midriff right here. I actually, what did I, I did something different with it, but not much, nothing drastic. Oh, we were just, they were just talking about the Kiki. Yeah, there's a few people that like that pattern. That's great. I, this one I just drafted myself. But yeah, I think that that's a great idea. I have, um, there's so much fabric in this, this yardage, you know? Let's see, where do I want this last one here? I have a lot of this. I'm seeing like I love cutting it really close like what's the biggest scrap I can get even though I can't use it <laughs> look at that that'll fit good he really shows marks easily like at least a little oily mark oh interesting I wonder what that is Melinda cheap manila paper uh you know yes louise um the problem with manila paper in my opinion nancy is the shipping is so expensive because it's really heavy so no i don't um it's not something you can get wholesale because unless you're reselling it which you're not you're not gonna be able to get wholesale i can't get wholesale it doesn't even even when i was in the industry we didn't get wholesale because we were the target customer so i just doubted a little bit of my green line there because those stripes um i was looking at the full i can see that my fold on here i am cheating a little bit obviously i am looking at my stripes but they're pretty good actually like, I, I, I'm almost on that same stripe up here, and I am down here, so. Even though the print is probably not printed perfectly on grain, I am cheating a little. I know that. Um, so, yeah, so the manila comes in different weights, and I can't even remember what weight I get. I know that there's lighter weights, and I don't, I'm not a really big fan of them, but it might be worth it if the shipping is a lot of money. You can probably buy the Myrna somewhere, Val. Probably on their website, on the on the Seamwork uh, website, because Seamwork was Colette. And you can make it as a top, which I've never done, but I, I love the idea of that. And I do have video. It is something I streamed, so I did sew it.
the 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 paper cost i feel like it ends up being roughly i feel like it's like a dollar 25 a yard plus shipping I, I don't quote me on that though it's been so long since i bought my roll but i know that when i would buy a roll the roll itself would be about $65 and the shipping would be about $55 or $60 going from LA to Northern California. So it almost was double the cost to ship it slow. And that's 44 inch wide. I don't recommend getting wider because it's really fiddly if you don't have a huge table. And it's a beast, it's a kind of a beast thing. Like mine's sitting over there um, I don't think you can see. I can't move my face cam from here. I think they do, Nancy. I think I've seen it on there. I don't need another one of those crotches because remember I cut two, the first pair of underwears. Ooh, I still have all this. Thong time. <laughs> like, can I do it? Can I get another pair out? <laughs> oh my gosh, I probably could. That's crazy. What if I did that? Oh my gosh, I could get another pair out. Holy moly. This got me so far. I got, this was like, this was a good deal. I don't know what else I'm gonna use it for. Right? They do, Barbara, Val, Seymour has the Myrna still. Yeah, I think it's just, you probably can only get PDF version unless uh, some someone's getting rid of their print versions. Because I still see print versions of some of their patterns and they're always on sale because they don't make them anymore and they can't get any more sizes. I'm gonna make out make out another pair, seven pair. Do I really want seven, three pairs of this print as underwear? <laughs> I have to say my watermelon ones are some of my favorite. Dang it. And my husband loves them. He thinks they're really funny. That, those underwear, the, the watermelon, where it was scrap fabric from a project that I did for Hearts. So they're the ones who sell that watermelon print and it's brushed, brushed uh, knit. And they're, they're, they're really, really soft. The unplanned undies episode, totally. <laughs> We're really going to get, maybe it's good I have three pairs since I haven't sewn anything on my serger or cover stitch and this is what I'm starting with. Maybe it's a good thing I have a few burners. <laughs> Burner undies. <laughs> my plan is to, this is my thing. I, I hope I can sew the undies on Saturday, but I may not even have the elastic. That's what I'm worried about. And I, what I'm really worried about too is I didn't leave many scraps to make fabric waistbands and I just remembered that. Cause I like the band to be out of fabric rather than elastic. I don't mind the elastic, but the band is, is soft, you know? And then you just overlock it on it's pretty easily. Hi Kelsey. So how do you like to do it, Kelsey? Because uh, I want to do mine by, what I was thinking is keeping it flat. So put assembling the crotch panel to the front and the back underwear, leaving the side seams open, cover stitching the elastic on the legs, sewing up one side seam with the serger, cover stitching the elastic on the waist, and then sewing that last side seam up with the serger, and then using the single needle to secure the ends of the um, seams where needed. Did I just say that too fast? But that's my plan. And then I don't need a zigzag and I just need the cover stitch serger and my single needle for a little bit. Unplanned epi uh, Andy episode. <laughs> Gold star. 
99 cents. Oh, well, there you go. 10 yards of 60 inch manila. 10 yards for $44. So they're making up their shipping cost with the price per yard. You, well, the band, I stretch the band when I'm putting it on. Is this the bottoms? I stretch the band when I'm putting it on. But it's pretty soft. These aren't slimming underwear. Like, I have some of those, like, where I didn't realize I bought these Hanes ones. And they were like, these are also um, compressing or something like that. And I was like, what? And they just have a fabric band, too. Um, and they're not low rise either. So. <laughs> Alright, so let's see. I've cut out eight pairs of underwear, three jammy tops, one with sleeves, two without. That's pretty productive. We need one more cotton panel. Let's see what we got. We got underwear. I wonder how my elastic is though. I don't think I have much. Yeah, there might not be any underwear sewing on Saturday. <laughs> Bye, Martina. Sleep well. Ah, oh, thanks, Ray. Remember to hit the like button. I have this piece. I haven't organized my trims very well since I moved here. Oh, here it is. Here's my bin. This is it. This is all I've got. Remember this kind of menswear elastic? so funny. It's, uh, that's the only piece I have is two little pieces. I have those amazing shelves at our old studio. This is still, this is Christy's little letter she sent with me. So she sent me this beautiful fabric to make my own and um, I'm actually wearing those and uh, she she's like I didn't know if you'd want yellow or peach so these are all scraps. I could probably do one leg from each of those. Yeah, I don't really have enough. Let's see here. <laughs> it's like <laughs> very spotty here. What I have. I use this on the watermelon ones. Per it turned out perfect. This is a little wider for a uh, waist. And these are the um, fold over. Night, Louise. Sleep well. You fought. Why are you? Why the sad face, Kelsey? That sounds great. It sounds like that worked out great. You used the so Sophie Hines altitude thong, high waisted, surprisingly comfortable. That's awesome. I could be embroidered the days of the week in a holiday. <laughs> right? The eight day eight pairs. Oh yeah, Melinda. Like a store bought. Yeah, right? These are also fold over. Maybe I'll try and get some more by Saturday. Um, I could maybe check locally for that. I think locally I can find this. It's got that little pico edge. See that? Very, very small. The fold over with the ruffly edge. Uh, this right here. You know, um, I feel like I was talking to Alexis 
at Hearts. I feel like they sent this to me because they were like, we just closed out all of our underwear making stuff. Um, I'm just going to send you what we have left. And I feel like I got this from her. If not, because this right here came from Christy. And I bought this from Bra Builders or Bra Maker Supply. Bra Maker Supply or Bra Builders. And this is like Pico. It's not fold over. These are all fold over. And they have that little, it's cute, isn't it? Yeah, it's really cute. This is like what you get at Joanne Fabrics. It's got the little um, gentle pico and the edge there. Yeah. Oh, so, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> that's cool, Melinda. Melinda, thanks for, for becoming a patron. That's awesome. Yeah, so I'll report back, but um, the places like Bra Builders and Bra Maker Supply have that, a lot of this underwear stuff. If anyone else can recommend someone, I'm, uh, I'd love to hear it too. Hag Club. <laughs> you don't strike me as a hag. <laughs> okay, well, this is what I got. So we'll see what I can muster up by Saturday in the way of elastic i guess my eyes are bigger this is my problem with buying this stuff is like when you have these weird amounts left you know this would be a leg that could be a this is actually i think these three pieces here were cut i think two of them were cut for legs but this isn't big enough for a waist and it's very very stretchy this is firmer much firmer I'm glad, Melinda. I love having you here. <laughs> Can you even hear it? I like this stuff. It's very stable. This stuff is, it's kind of um, see-through. See that? It feels very delicate. It has really great stretch. Like Nancy's in the past. <laughs> no. All right, well, um, let's see what I have. This I feel like is from Bra Makers because they dye it to match, and I bought these two colors. So, Surge Fabric is that how you spell it? Surge or is it S E R G E? Surge Fabric, okay. I love this because it matched that watermelon print so well. I think it's right here. Oh, here's here's a scrap of what Christy sent me. So this is this is what I'm wearing right now. Look at this stuff. Isn't it beautiful? I saved every little bit. It's goldfinches, watercolor goldfinches. Isn't this gorgeous? Oh, kind of bright. Yeah, and this is what she sent to go with it. It's so pretty in person. It looks like they watercolored it directly onto the fabric. It's There's so many colors and nuances. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, oh, look. This is on a card. This is Bra Builders right here. Look at that. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay. I need to go find food. All right. So thank you so much. I'm so glad the stream worked today because of the chainsaws. That's great. And, um, we could cut these out. So I'll be here. I can't believe today's Thursday. I keep thinking it's Wednesday because I didn't stream yesterday. I'll see you Saturday and we'll at least be sewing my pajama tops. And maybe I can do one pair of underwear <laughs> with the elastics I have. We'll see. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. This is pretty spotty what I have. What are the three colors again? 
Oh, right. Yeah. Didn't think that through, did I? I thought of the underwear thing last second. So, all right. Well, thanks so much for coming, you guys. I really appreciate it. And um, I'll see you on Saturday. I'll get to break out my cover stitch and my serger. Uh, if you want to support me, I really appreciate it on Patreon. Um, if you can't, you can even just follow me on there, which is great. I'm probably going to get rid of my newsletter because I never use it and it costs me $63 a month to have it which is crazy because I always loved having a newsletter and I just, I don't know, I never send any newsletters. And I'm trying to do more on Patreon. It's just a kind of a nice little hub, makes it easy. So, that's, yeah, you never because that's critical role. You have a lot of live streams on Thursday, that's funny. I still never caught up with that, but I still follow them. <laughs> All right, I will see you guys Saturday, 11 a.m., same time, same place. And um, I gotta find my mouse so I can actually say goodbye to you guys. There we go. Cool. All right. <laughs> I'll see you guys soon. Happy sewing and um, happy Friday too.